The Johnson Commission was created after the Concord overpass collapsed over Highway 19. In their final report of October 2007, they recommended the demolition and replacement of bridges with full-depth, thick-deck slabs that show it's a structural risk. The overpass ramp of Highway 40 East towards Highway 15 North, being of the said type of deck slab, was inspected and the replacement of the structure was recommended. The population growth and the economic development of Montreal's North Shore led to a heavier traffic on Highway 40 towards Highway 15 North. The rehabilitation of the De Laurentides interchange via the installation of an optimal configuration of the ramp of Highway 40 towards Highway 15 North became a necessity for both public safety as well as for economic reasons by increasing traffic flow. The rehabilitation project of the De Laurentides interchange, a $46 million project over a period of two years, includes the construction of four new structures and a partial reconstruction of highways 40 and 15. The entire project is spread over seven phases and two sub-phases, including a preparatory phase consisting of the construction of a temporary bridge. The total project consists of four new bridges and one temporary bridge to be built throughout the project. All structures are designed as a concrete deck slab on steel girders. The largest structure is composed of a curved bridge designed with steel box girders. The design of the curved bridge was carried out by the engineering firm SEMA Plus. Planning such a structure was based on the road geometry, the rapidity of construction, future maintenance, keeping a continuous traffic flow under the structure at all times, and the global aesthetics aspect of the interchange. To design the very complex and not standardized horizontal curved steel box girders, the designers had to refer to the latest world developments regarding manufacturing and structural behavior of this type of assembly. The steel structure manufacturer Structo Bridges, a division of Canham Group, was approached since the first design stages of the project. It shared, among other things, its expertise on the availability of plate lengths and transportation constraints for extra-large girders, thereby minimizing assembly joints on the site. The whole steel structure consists of a total of 310 meters of girders in length for a total of 458 tons of steel. Pre-assembly of the sections in the plant had to be extremely precise because the girder's radius of curvature limited the number of girders that could be assembled according to the space available. For handling sections in the plant, Structo Bridges designed special lifting hooks in order to avoid damage to the structure during handling. Fabrication and assembly was carried out by qualified personnel and by using the right equipment causing a minimum of stress on the girders. The quality of the product was verified during the entire process from manufacturing through painting of the box girders thanks to an efficient quality control plan. The construction of the curved bridge took place over the first four phases of the De Laurentides Interchange Rehabilitation Project. The displacement of Highway 40 East, as well as the construction of the bridge over the ramp of Highway 15 South towards Highway 40 East, are activities that were closely related to the construction schedule of the piers and abutments of this structure. Add to this the replacement and commissioning of 420 meters of the City of Montreal Aqueduct Network. Apart from previous work, it has to be mentioned that the completion of five temporary retaining walls was necessary to achieve the excavation of the foundation units. Thus, the construction of the curved bridge would have lasted about one year and a half. The curved bridge structure is the highest level of the interchange and passes over all other trafficable lanes. The installation required a major interference on the road network. De La Rantide Interchange is an area where traffic is the densest nationwide. To the complexity of operations was added the constraint of maintaining traffic flow. To enable erection of the girders, Highway 40 and all connecting ramps had to be completely closed to traffic. The whole process had to take place within a 12-hour period. All the installation process was scheduled to the very minute. Five teams who worked at closing the lanes allowed us to begin the work precisely as scheduled. 
Because the box girders were so oversized, there were restrictions when moving the superstructures between structural bridges in Quebec City and the site. The box girders had to be moved outside of peak hours and police escorts were required for each girder. We also had to find enough space on the site to store the 10 sections. For that purpose, four areas spread across the site were prepared to accommodate the box girders. The position and order of arrival of each section was carefully planned in order to minimize displacements on the site and facilitate operations. Highway 40 had to be completely closed for three nights to allow delivery of the girders to the site. Universal Structures Incorporated was responsible for the erection of the structure. With three generations of experience in crane and steel structure erection, Universal Structures affected 10 cranes operated by 20 people and 30 steel erectors to complete the work. Work of this magnitude in such a short time had never been accomplished. The size of the box girders and the configuration of the site required a tandem lift crane for each girder. The largest hydraulic crane in the world was used to carry the heaviest section, weighing 60 tons, over a distance of more than 90 feet. A sandwich lifting system was specifically designed to avoid micro-cracking that could have been created by the stress generated during assembly. When lifting, despite the efficiency of the lifting system, the rotational deformation of the box girders under their own weight could vary by up to 20 millimeters. Preliminary lifting was completed to ensure that adjustments made on the sandwiches allowed a perfect nesting of the box girders to the splices. Assembly in the air transformed the girders into a hyperstatic system. This means that the lifting efforts no longer matched the design efforts. To ensure the integrity of the structure, assembly had to be done in a specific order when bolting and when releasing loads by the cranes. A total of 4,400 bolts were installed during the night. Following the installation of the structural steel, and because the bearings could not be operational immediately, a retaining structure was installed to the piers and abutments. Chains that can withstand a load of 260 kilonewtons each were installed to prevent movement of the structure under the effect of wind and traffic below. The completion of structural steel erection work proved to be a major achievement. The limited space on the site, the proximity of traffic lanes and the tight available schedule required a perfect synchronization of the whole work. The 10 mobile cranes consisted of two 210-ton cranes, three 200-ton cranes, three 250-ton cranes, one 400-ton crane, and one 1,500-ton crane, the largest mobile crane in the world. Their positioning, coordinated within the location of the girders before and after lifting, was implemented to the millimeter. The work schedule was so tight and precise that the sequence of erection required the installation of a crane on Highway 40 West with simultaneous installation of two girder sections. For unconventional installations such as this one, the installation standard time is usually installing two sections per workday. For this project, all ten structural sections were installed within nine hours. In conclusion, we would like to mention the collaboration of everybody involved the structural manufacturer's assistant since the early steps of the project and the understanding of the erection methods, combined with a strict compliance with the schedule, led finally to the success of this project, the masterpiece that is the De Laurentide Interchange.